Welcome to Heart in Hand, the Rangers podcast, the podcast that is getting a strange buzz it remembers from a long time ago. This week on Heart in Hand, never mind the Saints, it's Rangers who go marching in. Welcome to Heart and Hand Rangers Podcast. My name is David Edgar. I am your host as always, as I uh, was was called last week by a first time listener, uh, an immature, expletive, sectarian word removed uh, Ned. So thank you very much to that first time listener. Um, I, I hope you're back for week two. I've taken the criticism on board and uh, will attempt to get words like homogenous. And, and what not, and, and correctly at that. So joining me then, I've invited a cerebral panel to try and lift me up. Um, first of all, the ultimate Rangers da, bus convenor to the stars, it's Mr Andy McGowan. <laughs> evening guys, evening. And joining us fresh back, well a few days now, but uh, no less shattered I dare say, from Villarreal, it's Mr Martin Ramsey. Yeah, fresh isn't the word I'd use yet, but yeah, good evening, gentlemen. <laughs> now, Martin, obviously we covered the match on, on Heart and Hand Extra, so if anyone wants to go back and listen to that, please do, but uh, it would be remiss not to have a, a quick chat to you about it. Now, you went over there more in hope than expectation, I think it's fair to say. How did you find your, your day and evening and just the whole gamut? I mean, Andy will tell you, I mean, these, these day trips, they're not the cheapest day out, but you do it just in case, just in case you get a night like that, just in case you get moments like that, in this case two moments, um, and then the final whistle. Um, it was a special trip, I spoke to a few of the boys that were out there who do them regularly, have done for a number of years, and it ranks high with them as well. Um, it just felt we were back. Um, I think for the day and the first half, it, it just felt that we were back just to be back and kind of making up the numbers and, you know, just celebrate the fact we're maybe a wee bit ahead of schedule and just back at a Spanish team and in a group stage. Um, but the second half, it felt we were back as a competitor, which um, was, was maybe a, a pleasant surprise, but fucking hell. The bruises I'm just now uh, finding today <laughs> from the celebrations, which were um, thrilling and... and not a wee bit dangerous, to be honest, the steepest stand I think I've ever been in my life. Um, but, I mean, what a support. They were tremendous all day. Uh, the police were sensible. Um, I know we've had our um, issues uh, in Spain before, but there was not a hint of it. It was just a, just a nice day of celebration, and the evening um, continued. And um, for those of us, and I think it's quite a lot of us, maybe, Andy, you're in this boat as well, that you know, started off life in, in working class, situations and maybe thankfully and luckily have made our way up the social ladder somewhat martin was a wonderful exponent of that last week as he sent us a photograph of himself drinking from a coke bottle which he'd filled with vody but what type of vody oh great goose, great goose. Great goose. <laughs> exactly so there he is drinking in the street out of a coke bottle but but there was, that was a the plane <laughs> that was, it was a <laughs> But you had to, uh, had to be a wee bit covert. There was nothing covert about the street. Just three big litre bottles of vodka on the, the table. It was a, <laughs> ah, it was a good, long remembrance. <laughs> well, well, my problem with these sort of trips is I barely can remember anything yeah. the next day. But, uh, yeah, excellent result. And it set us up for a crucial weekend. Now, lads, Andy, we don't like to talk about the opposition here. But I think in terms of the league, it's fair enough to do so. Um, you know, I think now... We're beginning, as I say, just to, to get that little stirring downstairs that we remember. And no, those of you who are married, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking instead about, hang on a minute here. Maybe, maybe this is on. Celtic, who have been pretty shocking all in after the old firm match, had gone ahead of us, obviously. And I think we, we said, and when I mean we, I'm not talking about the Podders, I'm talking about the Rangers support at large, the vast majority of us went, well, OK, let's see where we are in a few weeks because, you know, we've got a run of decent fixtures, they've got a slightly tougher one. But when the news filtered through from Rugby Park, I, I mean, I was outside the stadium at the time waiting on a friend when a huge cheer went up and there was something really evocative about that, it took me back to the old days. But for them to have taken one point and for us to have comfortably taken six, it 
just maybe changes what was becoming a pretty set narrative. Well, the, the thing is, I think we've been dying to lay a glove on these guys so that we can see how they react because nobody's done it. And for the past couple of years, well, I mean, the couple of years, but the past few years we've been listening about everybody waxing lyrical about St. Brendan and this mythical team that are only second to Brazil 1970. <laughs> so it's it's good to actually be in a position now where we can actually apply some pressure and more than applying pressure, we might have a team that can follow up on it. Touch wood. So you're right what you say, David, before the game, when that goal went in, it was unexpected. It was uh, gladly welcomed and it just set us up nicely for the game itself. So aye, it was, it was uh, a throwback to seven, eight years ago. Martin, you and I did a show together on our Patreon site, which I urge you all to check out if you haven't. Those of you who get in touch with me after games and say, I wish there was a pod right now. Well, there is. Um, Patreon.com forward slash heart and hand and you'll get five shows per day. And one of the ones Martin and I did was dealing with the year we should have won 10 in a row. Now, Martin, one of the things about that team is that it was capable of getting up for the big games, i.e. the old firm matches that season, but would struggle in other games that it shouldn't have and I do wonder if when you've been invincible and you're winning games in the tunnel which Celtic had you know they'd earned that right I'm not going to be um, saying that teams lay down to them when you're in that position where you're winning every week teams kind of go we'll write this one off and our big games next week but when that turns and teams begin to think we can get at them that can just psychologically be such a transition for a team and I do wonder how they're coping with it at the moment and thinking that sometimes when you're on the crest of a wave then you'll plateau, then you'll come down and I thought they would still be on the plateau but maybe it's the come down oh, certainly hope so um, away from home they look vulnerable certainly I think that, that fear's gone uh, like team fancy or teams fancy having a, a, a wee go. Um, the the comparison with us in in ninety seven ninety eight is uh, to an extent fair. Every situation is different. Um, things aren't good there um, at all. I think it would it, it would appear. Uh, we knew Walter was going. Brendan appears to be trying to go. Um, his comments after the game yesterday were <laughs> bizarre. Well, just just incredible. Yeah. Um, so things are not right. You get players like, I mean Sinclair. I, I wasn't too worried. My friends keep telling me how I got that wrong in his first season. He also had a great season, but that appears to be the the, the, the exception. I mean, this is a guy who not that long ago was outscored um, in a season by Julian Lescott. <laughs> um, he's he. Yeah, I mean, Roger's the kind of guy you want when, when, when things are going well. You're a really good motivator. Um, but we've all... I mean, Andy hit the nail on the head just before. If we do lay, lay a glove, or if, if one or two or three teams are showing a capability to, to stay with the pace, he doesn't have a good track record of putting the foot down the way that, that, that we, we did in the middle of nine or We had inertia after 93 for a couple of seasons. Mm-hmm. But we had enough um, muscle memory, winners in the team, and a manager who you just would pull it out when it mattered. Um, and that that's going to be the narrative of the season. Um, and that win and goal, it just looked like all you needed to do was just chuck the ball in the box. And again, something during that period, seven in a row in particular, when Rangers were really dismal that season. Um, but everybody else was rotten. Not even, yeah. you know, Rangers won the league in March by losing, if memory serves. So, um, none of this matters, Andy, if we can't do our job. It's as simple as that. Yeah, and this is where your, your kind of false dawn memories come back because we've, we've had so many in the past uh, five, six seasons where you think you've turned a corner at any level and it just doesn't come to fruition. But there's something different. I mean... We watch Rangers all the time, we see every ball they kick and this season, almost from the friendlies, there's been something different and 
it's easy to say, say it's a Gerard effect, but it is. <laughs> because whatever, whatever him and Mark Allen and his backroom team are doing, they've instilled um, a steal that we've not had since the Watersmith team. That's about the bottom line. And going into yesterday, there was no real doubt in my mind we were going to win. Now, I thought we might have a wee bit of hangover for the Thursday night, and that's only natural. But there's... Uh, a resilience and there's a, a bit more strength and depth in terms of the squad now where you can be a wee bit more relaxed and and expect what we should be expecting for a Rangers team that's actually capable. Now, I'm trying hard not to run away with myself here. <laughs> and, uh, I'd, run away with Andy, run away I'd run away with you, Andy. I'll keep your eyes I'd run away with you, Andy. You're a very handsome Thanks, man. I'd, I would. I know that. You know, I'd run away with your wife. I know. I know that, I know. Yeah, okay. okay. Just if you're listening, but, uh, Sarah, you can do better. Why go with one of the. Sarah, what? Sarah, Sarah, don't listen to Why go with one of the monkeys when you can have the it's organ grinder? Like... That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but where was I? <laughs> Before I hit on I'm your wife. Where were you? Before, I'm, try, I'm trying to run away with myself because, first of all, deep down inside, I believe we can win this league. But secondly, only a fool would say that if there's six games because there's so much football to be played. You've got a Hearts team that look very, very strong. They do. And uh, you, you think about games away, Easter Road, Petodre, Tynecastle, Parkhead. There's so many games, so many variables and things that can turn in a, a sixpence that can change a season. So um, we will need a wee bit of luck. Uh, to plug another show that me and you did, Martin and Davey, we did the, the 1987 uh, league, uh, league title win at Pataudry mm. and when you look back at that season we got wee bits of luck or we made our own luck whatever you want to put it that made that season a championship season if we can kind of do that again then we have a chance As Andy says Martin extrapolating after six games is although understandable for us we're fans you kind of hope for a little bit more realism from the media and one of the things that Maybe it shouldn't have, but yes, it still does surprise me, was the utter vehemence after Parkhead that, well, that shows you, and the utter refusal to look at any of the circumstances, or Rangers, of course, being in Russia before, the fact that it is a team, as you say, with that muscle memory of winning, who are the champions, you know, and and back-to-back treble winners, We we cannot take that away from them. But it was the utter vehemence of, you can't even think about a challenge that surprised me. And, you know, four weeks later, it's turned. It will turn again and probably continue to throughout the season because this does appear to be a season where things are, after being fairly steady for a while, have gone into flux. As, as Andy says, Harps, for example, Hibs are a decent side. Kelly are proven to be a decent side. Aberdeen, who were, you know, comfortably the second best team for a number of seasons, look to be struggling. So things are changing. I, I don't quite get the certitude that was expressed. Um, I think it was a bit of relief um, because a lot of them had mocked the appointment. They've tried very hard to dampen the the enthusiasm uh, just because you know they, they, they don't like the club, um, and they saw that one ninety minutes in frame as all the evidence they needed that that this was a crock of shit at House of Cards, um, and and that that's that. Um, because they've got a vested interest in, the, in I guess, the narrative that, that, that Brendan takes them to, to ten, mm. and we don't we don't get back. We, you know, we just don't. Um, certainly not this quickly. This and this is not in the script, kind of thing. Um, so they will play, or they'll, they'll upplay um, defeats uh, and drop points, and they will downplay. Um, things happen like yesterday to them, where you know, you know, these things happen. That, that's football. It's only six games, and and, and blah blah blah. Um, so it's just when it suits them. Um, but I think it's it's they have the script in mind, and they they, they don't really want to deviate from that. It's a very Scottish football thing, isn't it, mate? That they yeah, I have made my mind up about this, and therefore no evidence at all should be considered that might change it. And it's a very social media age thing. Mm. Football fans are terrible for it. People will defend shit players to their dying breath because they can't say to their friend, even their own supporters, uh, their, their own pals, I was wrong there. Mm. Um, and it's not healthy. You're allowed to be wrong. And you're allowed to say 
yeah, I, 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 I didn't call that right. Um, but it's people want to die on these hills for, for whatever reason. I'm not entirely sure why. Well, I'm still convinced Colin West is going to come good. So, <laughs> any any given point now. Um, Can I tell you a story about Colin West? Well, you're racing him. Do you know that I went into a hairdresser and twelve year old with a picture of Colin West and she's going to give me a hair like that? Ah, but you've still got it now. Obviously, <laughs> I know. I know. You still, still got a Colin West. <laughs> Listen, there's nothing wrong with that. One of the one of the best ever. Uh, well, he will be, I'm sure, at some point. But uh, <laughs> yeah, moving on from that. Now, those of you who listen to the show regularly will know that what we do is we watch the game, do a, a post match reaction, and then we watch the game back. Um, having you know, obviously, you see something in the stadium. I thoroughly enjoyed myself, Andy, in the stadium yesterday and I thoroughly enjoyed watching the game back this morning. Um, I, I wouldn't say Rangers played particularly brilliantly in the first half, but like you, I never ever thought, well, we're in trouble here. And in the second half, I thought there was some lovely football. Right. Uh, the, the thing I was wanting to kind of put across, first of all, I've watched the highlights a number of times since since yesterday for the same reason as you, David. It's just they're so good to watch. There was a lot of kind of talk about St Johnson being poor. St Johnson were poor because we suffocated them for the first minute to the last. St Johnson came, and St. John, one thing you can count in St Johnson is they're always going to be organised, they're always going to be quite energetic and hard working. And they set up with a, uh, as far as I could see, a 4-2-3-1. Mm. So when, when we had the ball, they were compacting at five in the middle of the park, but when we, when we had the ball at the back, the two centre-offs, they were quite spread out, they were quite uh, pushed forward. And at first I thought this this may cause us a wee bit of problem because our midfielders, Koulibaly, Arfield, weren't really getting to do what they, they, they liked them to do. Mm. But we played our game, but we were patient. Probably played more between the centre halves and the, and the full backs than we wanted in the first twenty. And then when we got the goal for the year, I thought that was when we came into our own. So uh, this is what I'm talking about when I say about Rangers having resilience. We've now got a team that's capable of problem solving, whereas in the past. Obviously, the lesser players, but in the past, we've had a, a kind of plan, a style of play, and we can't really deviate from it. Mm-hmm. And if it's not going to plan, the players in the park actually don't have the intelligence or the wherewithal or the talent or the ability to actually modify. So I, I think we take all the credit for that. Yesterday, none of Davis and Johnson being poor. I think it's today with the fact that we just snuffed them out, played our game, got our first goal, went from strength to strength. Um, and I, I thought it was that. I wouldn't say a tour de force thing, that's a bit of exaggeration, but I think, um, as you said in the post match, David, we played to about 70%, and I said to somebody this morning at my work who asked me, I says, I think there's Mary Comfort for this team, I think that's the way I would describe it. Yeah, I, I, absolutely, I got that impression, but one of the things, Martin, that I, th- I think is becoming a theme for us this season when we're, when we're talking about Rangers, is that when they're brave, when they believe in themselves, at times I think that they are better than they currently think they are and the manager's trying to get that across to them because when they're brave in possession and take the risk of occasionally losing it and we know Ibrox is an inhospitable place to do that to to try and dribble around someone and, and lose the ball but yesterday in the second half they were trying that stuff and it was great to watch and difficult to deal with rather than, as we've seen far too often in the last few seasons, that sort of sterile, yes, you have possession, but you never really threaten to do much with it. And it, is it as simple as saying, look, at a club at Rangers, I'm afraid you you have to be brave in possession. You've got to run the risk of losing it and getting the offer fuck's sakes from the crowd. Well, yeah, um, it, it is a mental strength. Um, there's a much about being brave. I mean, being brave is doing something you don't know you can do. Um, it's it, it will take time for the penny to drop um, about where our level actually is. Um, it's still September. You know, it's six league games and only you know just just over a dozen games in total. Um, but once, and I think it is now. Spain was a. Um, hopefully a big moment in that regard that when we did kind of throw caution to the window we bit in the second half you're like Jesus we're actually all right uh-huh. <laughs> um and I think what it, it's it's just a steady improvement I, I thought we're actually quite flat to begin with not unsurprising given mm-hmm. the exertions of Thursday too, yeah. um we we get the goal 
Uh, not out of nothing, but it's a, it's a set piece. It's a great free kick. Um, but one feeling I didn't have after that goal on Sunday that I had continuously through last season, and you mention it all the time, I was never, oh, Christ, we need a second, we need a second. It, it, it'll come. It was coming, and I felt completely comfortable at 1-0 that we would get it instead of once we get two, then I'll, I'll start to relax. Because I, I just... I felt that it, it was just automatically going to happen, and it did. Um, and it, we're now building a kind of aura that if we go ahead at home, you're not getting back. And that's crucial, yeah. That Huge. Again, it comes back to the psychology of the situation because for a long, long time, teams have felt if they went one behind the eye blocks, OK, don't, don't change what we were doing because... You know we can they'll get panic they'll panic. Yeah, they don't get the longer that the, that we keep it, don't change what we're doing, and then they they get one back, and the crowd does panic because we've seen the movie so often, unfortunately. And you're right, I, I didn't feel like that yesterday. Helped Andy, and I agree, incidentally, totally with both of you that we did start a little sluggishly yesterday. The one kind of big negative, it wasn't a big negative. There were hardly any because they defended perfectly competently it was just that the passing from the defence was a little off and that was fairly noticeable early but they were helped out in no small measure by a really excellent attacking display Rangers started with uh, a front three of Ryan Kent, Daniel Kandias and Alfredo Morelos Uh, I thought the three of them were terrific with Alfredo Morelos genuinely having one of the best games I've seen him have Um, Quiet for the first 20 minutes, but he got no service. But after that, I thought he bullied their centre-backs and some sublime touches. Um, in particular, the the touch which leads off to his run for the cross that ends up with Scott Arfield's goal. I mean, that's just brilliant. Sometimes you see players and they, they, they hit the zone where they're doing things so off the cuff and naturally and their touch is absolutely perfect without having to think about it. He's getting into that kind of place. Um, he's work around the box, not even around the box, but he's work all round the pitch. He's immaculate, absolutely fantastic. If um, I, I'm critical of Morales for his finishing, I think his finishing's um, obviously when he's, he's things he needs to work on. I do think long term he's probably like a wee bit pace to take him right to the top in, in terms of what he should do in the last goal front or the rest of it, but. Anybody watching that game yesterday would see a player that's got so much potential and contributes so much to the entire team as a centre forward. It was fantastic, and I mean the goals yesterday. He had a, he had a hand in the last three goals. He, had a, uh, he set up uh, for for Arfield, which was eventually Arfield's goal. But he set up Kendias or um, Kent. sorry Kent, the, the shot at the bar. He set up Arfield for the Lafferty layoff. He set up Arfield to lay off to Kendias at last, and that was. Um, on top of his goal mm. right so um, no I, I thought yesterday that Ken and, and Kandias uh, were a constant thorn in, in their full back side but you've then got the movement of Morales uh, in and around the box and, and deeper if you need them it, I thought they were fantastic attacking wise yesterday because there was nothing what could you do against that what can you do to stop genuine explosive pace for Ken, similar for Candace, and then a wee guy like Morales dropping in and, he, and he's not even letting the ball come off him. He, he, he was a micro. Movement's the key there though, Andy. I mean, yeah. I'm sure we've had this discussion in the, 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 the pods before, David, earlier in the season, that the attacking cohesion was still some way off. We had improved vastly and immediately at the back, which we needed to do. Um, but that kind of understanding, that kind of chemistry with the ball, without the ball, um, mm-hmm. it's just going to take time. Mm-hmm. That, that that cannot be done in a, a few weeks in Spain uh, in the summer. Um, and Sunday was the first moment this season where I thought, OK, we can um, we can really take a game to a team. Um, I did think St. John's for poor. Of course, a part of that is, is, is how we played. Um, but it, it was more the combinations that we put together. Um, I've not really seen that consistently and to that kind of intense level just wave after wave after wave um, and that's a good sign because I, I kind of expected it would be far deeper into the season before that kind of understanding would really kind of come to light so you know to have it this early is something else that's, that's ahead of schedule I guess I'm really I think the, the European Kent. sorry David I think the European games have forged a, 
they've, they've, they've been thrown into the deep end, so to speak, and we've, we've come through it, obviously. But I think that the real positive for all these games, these high intensity, yeah. high state games, is that it's forced the team together fast, and that's why we're, we're sitting here saying we're so far ahead of where we thought we'd be at this stage. Yeah, um, and I, I was just going to say that I'm really enjoying watching Ryan Kent because I think that you can see the improvement month on month from him, which again is just I wonder just down to game, you know, learning to play more because obviously this is really his, his biggest run in a first team. The manager clearly rates him very, very highly, but he does have that thing that we were discussing there, Martin, that he'll take on his, his full-back. If he doesn't beat him then, that's fine, he'll beat him the next time, which is such a healthy attitude. And it was I, I was so unfortunate that he hit the bar. Scott Arfield, of course, puts it away and does very well, actually, because how often do you see those come back off the bar and the guy totally panic? But um, that was such a great move. And I love when you see the the, the winger making that, that run in to the box from wide when he sees yeah. something happening in the other wing. I think there's there's a lot to happen from him, and he was one of the four loanees that the manager has said this week that he's going to try and see about getting them a bit longer. In the case of um, Rangers, do have uh, a, a, an option on Lasana Kulabali, but in the case of Kent and Jari, that would probably be another loan spell. Um, this boy's got an awful lot in his locker. I'm sure I was on the show with Andy, or at least I, I heard Andy say when he, he made his debut that uh, he, if he didn't succeed, he just he just kept going back, um, and that that's a key thing that, that we we missed and we have missed the last couple of years, um, especially with some of the loanies that have come up. And you know we've got um, we've got a kind of muscle memory with that, with any kind of loanie coming in um, that we just we just think they're all going to be. Um, along the same lines of what we've had, because some of have started very brightly, but then just tailed away. These guys have improved and improved, and especially Kent. Um, and he was so unlucky. He's been so unlucky in a few games, actually. But he said doesn't appear to drop, um, which would suggest he's got that, that kind of mental strength um, that that this club has badly needed, and, and it would appear that we've, we've had a big injection of this summer. Um, and, and, and that's it. He just keeps going um, and it, it's good to see that, that improvement We have another fixture this week uh, it's a League Cup tie at home on Wednesday night to Air United and uh, it's um, it's kind of draw at this stage as we could have got if you look through all the, the teams that were remaining in the competition um, but it's important I mean we want a trophy this is the first one we can win Um I, I want to see Rangers go there. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to get back to Ibrox, which is, I think, a sign of how things are going. But th- we can't take anyone lightly at the moment and just expect to win. Maybe as fans we can, but I would hope that the players go out there and I'm sure they will because the manager seems a type that will be drilling them all week saying, don't take this, don't take this for granted. Right, pride becomes comes before a fall, yes. <laughs> and it was just like the thing for us. We sitting here saying we've got a chance, we can win the league, and blah blah blah, and then we get taken extra time by air or something. So they're flying. This is a thing that we're supposed to be conscious of. This is uh, air, air's tail will be up in, in their own wee world as well. So they'll they'll be coming in full of confidence. So I'd expect a couple of changes to the team. The thing that's heartened me is that we've been able to change the team about or, or have a degree of rotation without any dilution of the, the actual team. Uh, the quality so we've seen that uh, with Alexa McCrory coming in and, and he was excellent we've seen it before. yesterday I think McCrory was excellent well that, just as a we have an early topic of McCrory but that's what I kind of said when he first came in is that we have got a wee gem here but if he's not playing in a good team he could be ruined and what we're doing now is exactly what I hoped we would do which is play him in games at home where he can learn his trade he's playing with better players there's no quite as much pressure in terms of getting the result because we're, we're fairly comfortable. And I think that'll do well in the long term. But, um, I got, but in Wednesday night, I'd expect a couple of changes. I don't know if any will be through necessity. And Tavernier looked as if he took a wee knock, so I don't know if he'll be there. But uh, we've, we've got to win that. Again, we'll go back to 86, 87. We won the League Cup and that gave us great momentum early on in the season. The same kind of thing can happen this year with us because it's an earlier Cup final again. 
Martin, that's something that uh, you and I, up until his, his current manopause, long-term admirers of Jose Mourinho, and it was something that he spoke of a lot in his time, and or has done in his time of England, go in and win the League Cup, it's the first one you can win, and it just gives your players that mentality. No, well, absolutely. You, you you just get that um, that experience of picking up cups, um, and... Given the added context of of, of Gerard um, and uh, everything for new Rangers managers, um, get something on the board early. I don't think you could put a value on it. And we've got three games coming up, uh, and Wednesday's the most important of those three games. Um, it should be the, the, the easiest of those three games. I mean, I, I think you'd be, uh, as well as the United are doing, be hard pushed to say that that they're stronger than Livy, or certainly stronger than Rapid Vienna. Um, and uh, what I've, we've had a, a bit of a, a ding dong this morning about this in the group. Um, if there are four or five changes tomorrow, it doesn't mean that we're, we're turning up with our slippers on, thinking it's going to be a cakewalk. Um, we we need a squad. Mm. Well, if we don't have a squad to see off Air United at home, then you can forget any talk about, about winning the title. We, we we simply we just don't have the capacity then. If that's if that's the fact, um, so the attitude I'm sure will be right no matter who's playing. Um, uh, we we don't have a big enough squad to have absolute wholesale changes, but we we need to keep people fresh. It's a real tricky game on Sunday, um, so I I. I think we should have enough. Um, it, it should be an interesting game, just given the uh, the kind of confidence that Air have. If it was away from home, I'm not sure it'd be changing much at all, to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. But at Ibrox, yeah, the, 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 I, I'm sure, I'm sure it will be impressed on them how important this competition is. And even if there are four, even five, um, that we we still go with that that, that same intensity um, and well ruthlessness that we showed them on Sunday. I'm hoping to see Glenn Middleton on Wednesday night, Andy. Um, I think this, mm-hmm. and look, I'm taking. You know, I'm not somebody who who's saying play eight kids or anything like that. I just think he's no. earned a spot, and I think this is an ideal opportunity to to get him in the team. And I think it's merit, not me just saying get him in the team to have a look at him. I think that, you know, he could legitimately be saying, well, every time I've come on, I've, I've done pretty well. Give me a start. Uh, he's been he's been exceptionally good since he came in. At the start of the season, there's a running joke in my, my role at Ibrox because Jimmy I sit next to he's a great fan of him and uh, he's been a great fan of him for day one. He hadn't actually seen him but he still liked him for some reason, but there's there's you go. But I said I think that boy will go out and loan. I thought that would be the route that he would have taken just to get some first team experience at uh, a, a lower team. But when he's came in, he's been so good in the flashes that he's had that he's been impossible to ignore. To the point now where we're bringing him on against a La Liga team away from home when we're behind mm. and he's and he's bare less changed the game. Well, he did. Ah, he's changed the game. He changed basically. the game. He did. So, so there's a different dynamic if he plays for a start because in the games he's come on, he, he's a kind of atypical impact player, massive speed, gets the byline, always creates a chance and when you're coming on as a sub, that's basically, basically you can ask for more. So if he starts on Wednesday then it's a wee bit different from for him because he's obviously got to create for the, for the first minute to maybe 70, 80 when he comes off. But I think he deserves a chance, absolutely, as you say, David. His, his attitude seems spot on. <laughs> when you hear him speaking, he, he seems to have his feet on the ground. Mm. And I think the boy realises the opportunity he's got to be learning under a guy like Gerard and to be playing with uh, professionals that are still wanting to learn. This is the thing about our team. We're not an old team uh, as a whole. All these players are actually learning stuff on the job under Gerard. So he's just another one of them. Another player that I, I would expect and hope to see a little bit of at least maybe 20 minutes of on Wednesday night, Martin, is Umar Sadiq, who we haven't seen an awful lot of recently. Played in a reserve game today in a 6-2 victory over Dundee F. Played 45 minutes along with other guys you might consider for the first team, like Lee Wallace and Eros Grejda. Um But he hasn't had a lot of, uh, a lot of game time yet. And our podder Alex said on one of our weekend shows that if he didn't see him at all on Wednesday night, especially given that Kyle Lafferty is cup-tied, that it would worry him 
as to whether or not the manager has made his mind up about him or not. And for people who are maybe listening, thinking, oh, how can you, you're criticising the guy and you've hardly even seen it. I'm not, we're not saying he's a bad player or a good player, we, we don't know. What we're saying is, is that if he can't get into the team on Wednesday night, given the current circumstances, is that maybe a sign that the manager has had a look and decided, nah, maybe not? Well, it's the other side of the coin to the, the the point you just made about Middleton. Um, he thinks he's good enough to come on in a Europa League tie away from home to change the game, and he did. Uh, and he will give that boy his chance. Um, I think Alex is right. If we are, I mean, Morelos is going to play tomorrow, as far as I'm aware. Um, the gaffer has said Gerard, so. Yes, he's, he's confirmed that. So if we do get a lead, a comfortable one, and Morelos plays ninety minutes. Then the the opposite is true. He he doesn't he doesn't trust them, see a future, see any worth putting them on the park. Um, and you know we can have all the opinions we want, and a lot of them are un, uh, uninformed or, or relatively uninformed because we 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 don't see we don't see much of Sadiq at all. We certainly don't see training. Um, but Gerard does. Um, and yeah, I think it's 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 just the two sides of the same coin. If if we don't see him. Especially if we're doing all right and we're comfortable, then I think you can assume he, he, he won't be here in the new year. I think, Andy, that it, when Martin's speaking there, and as he says, we don't see him in training. And that's why uh, if anyone's listening saying, oh, you're being harsh on him and you're writing him off, I'm not. I don't know. I genuinely, I've seen him the same you guys have in the, uh, the brief cameos he's had. So I, I don't know. But what's maybe a, a, an odd feeling, Andy, because it's been a while, is that I trust the manager implicitly with mm-hmm. the players and it just struck me uh, how quickly he's not even earned our trust but just it's it's now categoric it's now well you know if, if Stevie G says then that's good enough for me that's pretty impressive inside what 15 weeks Aye it's uh, I mean the way he speaks the way he handles the press conferences and else else is um it's world class. <laughs> That's all you can say about it. The way he uh, conducts himself is excellent. There's no a word that comes out of his mouth that doesn't make sense, or isn't measured, and isn't uh, true. And and it's been reflected in the signings that we've made. Now I know that's not just down to Gerard, and there's there's Mark Allen's influence in the scouting network that we've actually got now. That we've lost. We seem to forget that that's this is the fruits of that that we're seeing now. Um, but you're right, Gerard's authority. Is what is making him look as if he could go to the top as a manager because he can't coach, he can't go to Inverclyde and learn how to be an authoritative manager no. or command a dressing room or uh, to have respect. Uh, Gerard exudes that, and a, and a lot of that is obviously because he was a world class player and he's achieved fantastic things in the game. That goes without saying, and it certainly helps, but at the same time, you've, you've got to walk the walk, and he appears to be doing it. I think he surrounded himself with. with yeah. Good guys, and I think he's been um, acutely aware of what he, maybe his deficiencies are, and and that's why Michael Beale's getting a lot of the credit for the, what's going on in, the, in the, the the training field in terms of drilling and all that kind of stuff. So, I think he's a very self-aware person, and I think he knows that he's got a lot to learn, but I think he knows his strengths as well. And put it this way, he's no better off than he can show coming to Rangers, which is there's no many managers in the world you could say that about. Uh, and he's yeah, and he's spot on there. Uh, he is he's doing the job that that he's well suited for. He's 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 the figurehead. Mm. He he has the gravitas. He has the stature. He can walk into that blue room. He can fill the blazer, which others just simply couldn't. Um, he knows what he has no experience of doing, and what per- perhaps he he just doesn't have the skill set to do. So he has guys in there who do. Mm. And Beal has a specific job. Gary McAllister has a specific job. Um, Mark Allen has a different kind of job. Um, he, he, clearly, there's a good working relationship with all the all facets of the the, the the management team. But he's the boss, and he, that is again that kind of figurehead. And and, and Ferguson was very much like that. Ferguson yeah. didn't do a lot of work on the training ground. Walter, he, he surrounded himself consistently with very good right hand men, very good coaches. It's, um, it's leadership. Like he's the word. Yeah, he, he's a leader. Yeah, he's a figurehead. He's 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 the, the, the guy at the top of the uh, the pyramid, 
but the pyramid isn't hollow. It, it, it's full of, 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 of talent being used in the, the, the most appropriate way. Um, and self-awareness, I think Andy's got it spot on because there's so many, especially British managers who don't believe in a lot of that kind of stuff. No. They see themselves as being the boss means you do everything. I will not sign a player I haven't watched 20 times, Tony Pulis. Um, I'll, I'll do, I'll take control of all the, 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 the tactical plans and shapes. Um, even if I'm not, it, 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 it's, it's an impossible job in football now to do all that. Um, so having that kind of awareness of where, where are my strengths? And it's clearly a stature. It clearly has leadership. He was a good captain. Um, with, with some um, uh, some clearly demonstrable talents there, so he's using it uh, to full effect at the top of that pyramid. Maybe, um, a, maybe a bit of a. Well, I'm going to use that team meeting. <laughs> well, maybe a bit <laughs> of a tangent, right? But I, 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 we've got time to go off on it for a few minutes. So, and it's so well, sure we can do what we want. Uh, but I do wonder if Rangers, unique club, no matter what anybody says, there's not a lot, especially with what happens to us recently. We're a club, I wonder, that cannot be managed by a coach. And by that, what I mean is we could have someone who is tactically incredibly aware and players like working with him and he's brilliant on, on that. But it, the personality almost trumps that for me. And if you look at some of our successful managers in recent years, Soonis, Walter, um, they've had that force of personality as opposed to perhaps being what we might consider these days, you know, a, a tracksuit manager and a guy who's out there um, moving his fullbacks 18 inches along and, and drilling them like that. And I do wonder if there are just certain clubs in the world where you need that. You need someone who is, if you like, the personality right at the centre of everything, as opposed to... Well, he's fantastically gifted in this one area. Yeah, but that's not going to cut it. Yes, I would why agree we... with that. I would yeah. agree to that to an extent. I'll, t- I'll say why to an extent. Um, because it depends on where the, the life cycle of the, the team, the football team, the club is. And I, I hate to keep going on about the, the, the comparisons, but they're real comparisons with Sunis. The Where we were then and where we are now, um, there's huge parallels and it's ripe for a character, a leader um, a figurehead, all these words we've been using to come in and kind of supercharge that and just take you beyond that line that you couldn't really cross up until that point, I think that's what's happened here, it happened to Chelsea as well when Mourinho came, he took them to that another level it happened to Manchester United when Ferguson, over a period of time right enough but when you've got strong characters you should get strong results but they've got to be back and they've got to have the infrastructures we're talking about, not just in their coaching staff, but the actual club supporting them and pulling in the right direction. So the first time in a long time, I can say with 100% certainty, our club, our board, our supporters are mobilised and we're going in the one direction. I think that helps as well. That is it's why Rangers can probably never be a project club. Mm. You can never have a project manager. And you know the kind of managers I'm talking about, very intelligent. A um, lot of ideas, um, uh, very analytical. You just don't get the time here. So the last two permanent managers we've had had strengths about them. I think they, I think they do. They, they could be part of a successful management team at, at a big club. Yeah. But they, they could not be the, the boss. Yeah. Um, they, and that's the difference. Try telling them that. Sadly, they've got other well, human beings. They have they have ego. Um, they they lack perhaps the self awareness that Gerard has, and they want to be the boss. And, and that's that's fine. Um, and they'll continue to to run into problems because they are not leaders. They're not bosses, but they could absolutely contribute to to that particular team. Um, and and yeah, I think you're right, David. I think there, there are a few clubs. Um, that, that, that you just can't have that kind of project manager. There are, there are a lot of clubs that, that absolutely can because they're, they're willing to give that time, they're willing to be patient, they're willing to listen to new ideas. Um, there are players that are absolutely pliant um, where these guys can, can preach and have the time to preach until that penny drops. 
Um, but at this club, it's 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 all about results. As I was talking to my friend Mark Walters yesterday. Yes, he was, folks. <laughs> he was. Um, actually, it's been a we've had a good run of interviews on on Heart and Hand, apart from earlier in the season when we had uh, Kevin Thompson, Ian Ferguson, Craig Moore, and Tony Vidmar. Uh, last week, we sat down with the skipper himself, Richard Goff. Um, for an interview which was was excellent Uh, this week um, we'll be having Martin talking to Mr Mark Walters which uh, must have been a thrill Martin for someone our age oh a total boyhood hero (laughs) stuff Um, he's a gentleman I don't think he really understands fully how much he's he's still revered up here Um, certainly guys our age but um, yeah that'll be be next week Tuesday the 2nd I think that's it and uh, this week the young team um, got an interview with Nacho Novo So plenty coming over on Patreon One ninety nine per month, don't know why you're not there um, it's, it's very much worth it Right, predictions then gentlemen Can I have uh, score predictions For Wednesday night, Andy we'll start with you 3 nothing, Rangers Martin you're quite good at this um, Unfortunately And keep taking my money off me In predicting my <laughs> predictions but, uh, but go for it And I'm going to stick a coupon on what you say yeah, I've, I've, you know, same for me, 3 0. I'm going to go 4 1. So get your money on 3 0, folks. Um, it has been <laughs> it has been spoken. Now, before we move on to this week's Total Hearts and Award, um, we always like to check in at our friend uh, at Kerry Fail Street on Twitter, which is a brilliant account which collects some of the best nuttiness from Celtic supporters around the globe and the social media world and puts it in one place. Please give them a follow at Kerry Fail. It's a wonderful account. Um, Just a few from this weekend, gentlemen. The establishment won't allow us to win 10 in a row. Apparently the establishment stopped him buying a fucking centre half in the summer, but uh, there you go. We've gone full Ronnie Dyla, except worse. Good to know. E- either Brendan Rodgers has lost the dressing room or has forgotten how to manage a team. Really worrying now. Um, Rodgers can go whenever he wants. His style has been found out and he has no answer. The team is broken. It's hard to see how it can be fixed. Can't watch much more of this garbage. If the manager has plans to go, I'd rather he fuck off now. Get Lenny back this week. That's the double treble oh. winning manager, folks. I, I like the establishment, like, because the establishment are stopping them getting 10 or own if they're putting us down to the yeah. fucking bottom division and transfer bans and putting the, the biggest spivs to our old in place. The establishment did that so that they can soak ten in a row. The, you have to Fuck me. you have to admire the trolling from the establishment here. When it sat down all those years ago, two thousand and eleven, and went, Do you know what'd be funny? Let's let them get to eight. Right. And <laughs> right. And yeah, we'll put, don't, don't let let it never be said that the establishment don't have a sense of drama. Yes, time. exactly. The establishment have a sense of you. I always wonder who the establishment is, because you speak to, to, to people who use the term and unfortunately and you know, in my working life, I, I had to. And I'd say, well, what was what the establishment? Politicians? I mean, in Scotland, I, this is not me making a political point. I'm just saying that, you know, traditionally, Labour and the SNP haven't exactly been pro Rangers, and certainly not currently. And they'd go, well, no, not the politicians. And I'd say, well, who then? And they'd say, well, the judges. The fuck have the judges got to do with anything? <laughs> what a bizarre thing! Well, I've I've yet to hear a high court ruling that suggested that um, you know Brendan Rodgers should uh, spend all his money in Edward and a million and a half on Jack Henry. But uh, uh, Celtic fans, if uh, they didn't exist, we couldn't invent them because no one would believe us. Um, right now, the total Hartson is when you have made such a kaleidoscopic cunt of something where there really is no comeback whatsoever. And we like to look around the world of football, see who has said something so stupid, so moronic, or done something, that it could have come from the mind, and I use that word advisedly, of one John Hartson. Who, incidentally, though, I I might owe an apology to, lads, because um, after the game at Parkhead between Celtic and Rangers, he said that um, he felt that... Aberdeen would finish second and I laughed at him but they might well pip, Aber- uh, pip Celtic to it <laughs> you know it, it could happen 
But uh, Martin, let's kick off with you. What, who are you bringing to the table? And remember, um, because uh, I, I think I know who you're going to pick, and remember, you will be comparing that person to John Hartson. So. No, I mean, I, I spent a few hours doing my research to troll on the website, sat like James Richardson with my Corella de la Sport, um, going through the entire update of European football. Um, but I'm going to have to nominate myself for my performance on uh, Thursday's update in Spain, um, when I effectively really compared our support to the Tartan Army just by, well, it's nice to be here. Um, we don't really have a chance. 2 0, 3 0 would be all right if we get away with that. Um, and Rangers proved me very, very wrong, thankfully. I mean, I could blame it on the, you know, the vodka and the, the, the sun, but um, you all know me, so you know I'm just a pessimist generally. Yeah, well, yes, you are. <laughs> you genuinely are. Um, as brilliantly described by one person who says, Does Martin sing along to his own music? Because I thought I heard a sad, depressed, do, 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 do uh, going on in there. So sad, depressed, Martin. Um, uh, this is a math. I'm, I'm, I'm a very content fellow. Um, I just compare when someone says you need to lighten up, but I ask them if they mean dumb down. But, um, oh. No. Oh. No, I, I, I genuinely felt we were just there for uh, the the experience, um, and so did Rangers for the first half, I think. Um, but it just shows you in the second half when you you just have a wee go, you never know. Um, well, <laughs> I like you in that. But did you just compare us to fucking Tartan Army? Well, that, that's why I'm. That's why I've nominated myself because effectively that's what's what they always do. Is just as long as we can go for the party, we don't really care about winning or losing. And that's how I felt about the Europa League around three o'clock in the afternoon when David phoned me. Um, not quite how I felt about it near eight o'clock. That's fair enough. You've, he has just I'm compared him. Back. He has just taken the penance of comparing himself to John Hartson. I know. And that is that is deep penance indeed. For what it's worth, Martin. I'm himself awareness as the manager does. Yeah, for what it's worth, Martin, I think that after those three litres of grey goose, you still were probably more intelligent than John Hartson. So, uh, uh, oh, there's no doubt that. Yeah, I, I think even then, had we sat you down for a a, a mastermind with him, uh, my money would have been on Ramsey on that one at that point. Um, Andy? Uh, can I get two? Of course. Yeah, so the first one is, and I kind of loathe giving the guy exposure because we all know about him, but we're talking about Gerard this pod and you're hearing a bit of crunching of gears as some of our esteemed <laughs> journalists in this country are fucking crunching to find reverse. <laughs> and they can't quite find it yet, but see, so shortly they'll be doing, they'll be reversing like a stunt man. Tom Ink retweeted one of his own tweets. What did he retweet? He retweeted an old tweet that said, Rangers' grand plan to replace an under-20s coach, i.e. Murty, with no previous managerial experience, question mark, an under-18s coach with no previous managerial experience. So there you have it, a nice condescending, typical Tom English fucking prick Twitter <laughs> tweet. And then he's retweeted it saying, one of my better tweets. So he's had a moment of self-awareness. Maybe he's had an epiphany on Sunday and thought to himself, fuck, I better start getting back in gear here because I've made a rap roaring to you and Tierras. Did he consult um, experts so, on that one? You what? Did he consult experts and they told him? I oh, know. Aye, that's right. Aye, that's why he took <laughs> That's right, took so uh-huh. long, yeah. Um, the, the experts so, from the. So he was joined by his colleague Spears, but I can't even bother looking for his tweet and telling you what he said, but he's the same. He's reversing the high rate of dots as well. But my, my major hearts of the week is Stephen Thompson. No, yes. not the United, soon to be Tesco, but uh, the TV <laughs> pundit. Yes. Um, Stephen's, Stephen's kind of. is a cerebral uh, football. I think that the, the rumour is that he's there well, because he's good looking. Which he is. <laughs> Which he is. You know, I'll give him that. But I, I, don't yeah, know about you, I don't know about you lads. I've never tuned into sports scene and went, ugh, I'm not watching this. The pundits are just not attractive enough. <laughs> he is a big swell bastard. But, and he dresses well. But he's, he's kind of bugged me for a long time because he sits there with his, his folded knee or his, and, and kind of looking pensive. But... He doesn't ever really say anything that you wouldn't know yourself. But anyway, 
the reason he's a house in the week is he's, he's had a wee article in the Times this week and here he's Stephen now has a mild contempt for football. <laughs> he really, he wouldn't mind if he didn't see a football match again or talk about football match again. And it comes a, a distant third between his other favourite sports, tennis and golf. And it will not bother him if he goes to his grave never having had to play in a fives game or a charity game ever again. So here's a guy who made his living out of football but a small modicum of talent, I might say. And he's now, you have to listen to him on a Sunday night unless you tape it and fast forward through it. <laughs> but it, he's not interested in football. So um, I take it up behind the back of his wages every week to BBC Scotland and donate it to their IRA fund or whatever it's the day. <laughs> see, the, the, I think there's loads of players like that that just see it purely as a job and when they do finish, they are done. I, I, well, can, I, can, I can get that. But, but yeah, exactly. I think to be a pundit, to be a manager, to still be involved in the game, I think you've got to be a bit of a, a geek. You've got to, you can't get enough of it. You want to watch absolutely everything. Um, but I, that's an incredible thing to say. Two spears, incidentally. But, oh, is um, it? Yeah. yeah. But it, when when you're paid to watch football, to say, ah, you know, I hate watching football, um, you, you're just taking the piss. I wonder in what other sport that would be tolerated. Like, I, I, no, I, I genuinely can't imagine... The, if John McEnroe turned up at Wimbledon and went, I fucking hate tennis. Can't believe I'm having to watch this shit. That it would be. By the way, Martin, I'm just saying tennis and golf. I knew what his favourite sports would be before, before he said them. Is that because he can form coherent sentences? You just made that assumption. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm 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 just a a T A I G Ned apparently. So uh, you know, <laughs> you don't, don't 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 listen to me. Um, and I'm just quoting folks I wasn't using that word The horrible word I wasn't using it uh, On my own maybe, maybe, maybe it's just The proliferation Of, of football That they, there's so many hours Maybe not Scotland I mean This is hardly Sky Sports Try to fill their, their, their There's um, one their, hour On BBC a week yeah, um, <laughs> but you, you don't get in the, other, in the other sports at all Because they, they are More niche markets But what you do get then Is Genuinely good Summarisers and and pundits, Who guys cares? that absolutely love the sport and can yeah exactly, and watch it. They know what's going on. Maybe not even in the game they're talking about, but they, they still know what's going on in the wider context of sport. Um, and I think you are right. I think he's he he's he can talk. What he says isn't really worth a fuck, but you know he, he, he can he no, he can deliver it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he, he he is good on telly. He's certainly got a face for telly, but. Um, but there's no insight. It's because there's nothing there. But, it's all but surface. You're, you're, but you were talking about Scottish football here, and I the but, uh, I, I think this is a it's a British thing. But on the continent, football fans will discuss in a wee bit more depth. Um, let's say the, the tactical aspect of the game. Um, whereas and on the terraces. Traditionally in Scotland, that that's not really the kind of chat that's, that, that, that that happens. Thus, we don't we look at them as brilliant pundits, David. Really good tacticians, really good, uh, insightful voices that are just in the fringes of the mainstream. Mm. Even in Sky, even even then, you're still getting your you kind of rent a quote, gobshite, um, bland. Um, state the obvious guys. You have to go into podcasts and you have to um, maybe look to the to the broadsheets sometimes um, to find where the, the the real insight is because it's not really a British tradition when we we talk about football. It's all about spirit and and character and and, and drama and and I, I'm not entirely sure that, that certainly the Scottish football public until maybe now when you have a, a new generation of, of supporters who freely talk about that um, certainly traditionally I'm not sure that's been a there's been a huge appetite for that and they just want to see the goals well and, they, yeah, and, there's that I mean in a highlight show I just want to see the goals um, you're absolutely correct I'd rather see more football and less pundits um, what I will say though Martin is that yes that's a fair argument to a point because you're right maybe it hasn't been the case but the success that we're having and the other sites like the terrace are having is because there is now that appetite and remember him and Stuart were hired to be new voices you know so you would think they'd be representative of the current culture as opposed to the previous one but I have no problem whatsoever 
with a footballer who doesn't really enjoy football because it's a job and they happen to be very good at it and they can make a lot of money in it. It's a shame it's not someone who loves it, but that's life. Um, I wish I had more footballing ability, but there you go. Um, I do think then if you're going to then go into the media, I, I do think it's cheeky. I, I want someone who shares the passion of the fans. Um, I think it's an, an insult. It's not only that, it's the arrogance to say it. Because you should, yeah. yeah, you should be able to. That is deliberately slapping football fans in the face, um, and that is what annoyed me about it as well. So, well, enough, but just to bring this neatly back, um, Spears had that interview with, with, with Stephen Thompson. Tom English before he he went full mental. Um, he he absolutely eviscerated Alan Shearer during the 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 2010 World Cup. For that, exactly that. I hadn't bothered to, you know, look at the teams that were playing, didn't have a fucking clue, didn't really care, entitled footballer, and he, he, he tore them to shreds. It was a great article, and I, I think, whether it was that article or maybe others that followed it, but, but Shearer changed. He did, yeah. And he, 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 he took a lot of that on board and said, yeah, I need to sharpen myself up, kind of thing. Um, so, you know, it, 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 it it can that kind of criticism can work, but I I'd, I'd absolutely cap it, Thompson, for that. I mean, I wouldn't have him on anyway, but uh, being as brazen about that, it really it's just taking the piss out of the, the viewer. But again, what does the viewer really want? They want to see the Rangers goals. Yeah, that's the only reason I tuned in was to to see the Rangers goals. Um, but uh, uh, like I say, I I just felt that you're right. That Shearer one came at the World Cup where it, he famously said he didn't know anything about the two no. teams. Um, and you're right, the the storm of criticism was so great that he admitted, you know, he was wrong, and now does his research. But I look at people like Gary Neville and before him Andy Gray, who go into the Sky Studios, Carragher does it as well, on a Monday, and watch every game. So that yeah. when they're talking about players, they can say, I've seen his last six matches, this is how he's playing, um, rather than just give opinions. Whereas Thompson is giving... The reason his opinions are so bland is because he is bright enough not to say something that is completely untrue. So what he does is he says things that are completely anodyne based on the three-minute highlights that him and us have just watched. Um, I, I, like I say, I just think it's a slap in the face. And the, the guys you mentioned, there's guys out there like Stuart Robson who will break a game down for you brilliantly, like Don Hutchison, yeah. who clearly loves the sport. Um, as far as I recall, Don Hutchison got more caps for Scotland than Stephen Thompson. Um, get him on. Yeah, can you can disagree with that? And if you've got these two extremes, you have the the, the absolute bland, um, safe option there, or you've you've got some little bit Sutton, um, just try to stoke controversy when, whenever he, he possibly can. Neither are insightful, really. No, but they're on the periphery. But perhaps, perhaps there, there's a, a I hope um, there's a a growing groundswell of opinion that, that kind of demands that kind of thing um, on the telly. I've got two. Um, which I'll chuck in, although Stephen Thompson's sailing away with it. Um, the first one comes from Turkey, where Gul Spore president Kenyan Bayuka Kakleb, that is as good as it's going to get in terms of pronunciation, he sold 18 of their youth team players to their local rivals. And do you know what he bought with the profits? Any idea? Ten goats. <laughs> he said, it makes sense. We will get 4,000 to 5,000 lira profit from milk and they breed. So at the end of six years, we'll have 140 goats. His message to the fans was, these goats are in the best interest of the club. So when we talk about goats at a football club, it's generally the greatest of all time. Not here. Here it's your actual... Hopefully, at least they're Billy Goats. Hey, see what I did there? <laughs> so, um, and the other one comes from Romania, which long-term Heart and Hand listeners will, will feel a, a, a short and unmistakable jolt of joy at. Um, Paulo Isai manager Flavia Stoikan. Is that not the most Romanian footballer name you've ever heard? Um, he, a bit like Brendan Rodgers, to, to you know, take it back to think. He wasn't happy with the club's transfer policy. He said, 
The owners just sign players and I find out in the press or on Facebook or a player comes up and tells me, Mr, another new boy is here. God help me, I'm Flavia Stoikan. I can't have some guy tell me I've got that one, this one and that one. Who are you, dude? Who do you think you are? Do you think you're God? Do you think you're tough? What even is this? Where are we? Go home, dude. Just go home. I'm not some fucking heap of trash. Which is a spectacularly great press conference, you have to admit. Anybody, anybody that says dude that often must watch a lot of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, uh, well, I... I have a record for the teenagers. Ah, uh, that's one for the kids from Andy. <laughs> um, I, I say dude far too often, and the reason I do it is uh, I started doing it ironically after the first series of South Park and then found that it drifted into my conversation. And the time I realised it was when a friend told me his mother had died, and I went, dude. And he went, I know, dude. <laughs> And he, that was his response, he went, I, I know, dude. And I went, dude, that's fucking awful. I can't awful. carry it off. Um, no, you can't, no. Um, you need to be American. I'm more street than you, though. I mean, it, it, yeah. It, yeah, if you were a street, it would be like a Newton Mearns one, whereas I'm more ghetto than you, <laughs> I think. Yeah, you've got a hard life. Do the cleaners come to the ghetto? The cleaners thankfully do come to the ghetto, yes, as it turns out. And the dog walkers. And the dog walkers. And the gardener. Uh, yes, okay, okay, right, I'll grant you that my situation. But, I mean, I'm, I'm, don't don't be fooled by the rocks that I got. I'm still David from the block. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Andy, sailing away with the prize this week for making a total hearts and of it is Stephen Thompson. Um, dreadful comments, and you're right, in a just world he would be carpeted. But it's BBC Scotland, so... We know what we can expect. Okay, folks, thank you very much for joining us this week. Thoroughly entertaining show. If you'd like to hear more from us, we've plugged it often enough throughout the show, please go to our Patreon site. It's uh, uh, patreon.com forward slash heart hand. Loads of great stuff there. Only one ninety nine per month. Honestly, check it out. People come, they sign up and they stay. And uh, we're, we're sitting at just under three and a half thousand now, which... Um, shows you the remarkable growth that we're having over there but if not we will be back on Thursday with Heart and Hand Extra you will always get your two free shows a week from us here on Heart and Hand and remember we are now selling shite if you want to buy some <laughs> branded Heart and Hand tat trust me if there is a piece of cheap Chinese shite we can stick a logo on we're <laughs> fucking doing it um, go to heartandhand.co.uk and click on shop all the money will go to, sadly at the moment, just buying more shite, but eventually will hopefully pay for me um, to raise me out of the aforementioned ghetto. I'd like to thank my producers in London, Mr. Mike Lee and Paul Miles, and my two wonderful guests this evening. First of all, the ever superb Mr. Martin Ramsey. Pleasure, boys. And, of course, the wonderful Mr. Andy McGowan. Love it, Davey. Thanks for having me on. Take care, and we'll see you on Thursday. Till then, goodbye. Bye.